Well, welcome to Tea Time Spiritual Conversations for, with, and about women. I'm your host, Twana Henderson. And as always, I want to remind you to like this broadcast and to definitely share it with someone in your life. Well, I have a very special guest with us on today. Today's guest is Sarah Burt. Um, Sarah serves at Grace Church in Erie, Pennsylvania, where she is part of the preaching team and the lead for much of their written content. Uh, After serving as a volunteer staff person for eight years, two years ago, she was licensed as one of the staff pastors. Uh, Sarah is an alum of Indiana Wesleyan University, and she is also a former Spanish teacher, former volleyball player, and is an outdoor um, enthusiast. Uh, But mostly she loves Jesus a whole lot and is a self-described introvert who is learning to live and function in an extroverted world. She's married to Nate, and they have two kids, Madeline and Lincoln. Sarah, welcome to Tea Time. Thank you so much, Twana. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, you are definitely a multifaceted woman. (laughs) (laughs) Aren't we all, though? Aren't we all? (laughs) Absolutely. Well, you know, we'll have to come back to the Spanish thing. Okay. Uh, Cause that's my little, my little side thing, my Spanish, oh. but uh, I'm just so excited to talk to you and to hear about your ministry journey. Um, you and I met last November and mm-hmm. had the opportunity to talk about um, women in ministry over lunch. And so I want to first just go back to the years of young Sarah and um, you know, when you were growing up, what, did, what was, what is it that you wanted to become? Yeah. So in my younger years, I didn't have the typical like, oh, I can't wait to grow up and get married and have kids. But nor was I dreaming big of like, oh, I'm going to, you know, be an astronaut or I was a very (laughs) in the moment kind of uh, kid growing up, I think, whatever Mm -hmm. it was that I was doing with my family. And and I think that's because I was safe and secure and a, a, a good loving home. Um, Mm -hmm. but there was a moment when I was eight that I heard the story of Amy Carmichael for the first time. She was a missionary in India and helped rescue kids from orphanages and hearing her story Mm -hmm. stirred something up in me that wanted to be a missionary. And so that was kind of always in my mind, even as I was, you know, very happy with playing outside and being at home and all of those things. So there was this, yeah, there was this thing in my heart that thought maybe I'll be a missionary someday. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and that's I mean that's a pretty lofty, you know, uh career uh goal. Uh when you when you speak of Amy, um talk about some of the roles that you saw women um filling in ministry when you were younger. Yeah. Well, I think one of the things that I saw through the stories that I read and just what was happening around was that women were able to do ministry by being missionaries. We were able to Mm -hmm. go serve somewhere else in the world, somewhere else (laughs) in like this, you know, God given role of ministry. And so that was one way. Um, And the the other ways in the local church were the very typical and good ways of hospitality and behind the scenes kind of service, you know, making meals for uh, church lunches or, you know, Mm -hmm. serving in those making costumes for Christmas pageants and those kinds Mm -hmm. of roles. Those things did not appeal to me then, uh, nor would I say that those are my strengths now. But that was the limited picture that I had in my brain of, oh, to be a woman in the church is to serve behind the scenes or to go overseas, potentially. Yeah. And I mean, certainly there's nothing wrong with that, but I mean, it is very limiting in terms of, you know, who we are as women, our capacity and, and what, you know, God has, you know, put on the inside of us. Yeah. Um, I want to just kind of talk about your journey because, you know, you've gone from volunteer, you know, uh, to preacher, to pastor and inquiring minds want to know how did you get there? How did you get to this place? <laughs> That's a good question. I ask the same thing sometimes when, <laughs> excuse me, when I'm, you know, being stretched to that next thing. I'm like, how did I get here? What have I done? <laughs> uh, it really did start with, uh, it started with me seeking connection in church. So young, single, 20 something, moving uh, to a new city and not knowing people uh, walking into a church and just really craving community. 
Uh, and so found myself as part of a life group with other women, found myself leading that life group and feeling incredibly, you know, incapable of doing so and leaning heavily on a woman who offered to mentor me through that leadership experience. And so that really, I think, was the training ground that God was preparing me for all kinds of things I would never have ever dreamed of. At no point until the day my pastor said, would you consider being licensed as a pastor? Did I think of becoming a pastor? Um, it just wasn't, again, like we said before, it wasn't something I saw growing up and it wasn't on my radar. I didn't think that I was capable of doing something like that, but spent a lot of years uh, leading life group. And then through the mentorship of uh, a woman named Miriam and through the encouragement of some other people at the church, began to be asked to do some additional things, asked to help uh, teach this class at the church, asked to go ahead and write a class for the church, invited to host a service on this stage, invited to pray for a leaders meeting, just small steps like that of things. And they were all very stretching because like you said in the introduction, I'm an introvert. Um, but <laughs> isn't that amazing how God does that? <laughs> it is. I think he's just smiling, laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> he has um, a great sense of humor. He so does. He so does. <laughs> but I think for all of us, not just women, but all of us as Christians, we know what it's like to say yes to the next thing that God mm -hmm. wants to do and allow him to pull us a little further, a little deeper, stretch us a little more than we've ever been stretched before and then watch him do what we didn't think we could do, you know? And yeah, so that's yeah. really what it felt like for me every single step of the way until um, I was asked to preach my first sermon. And my first question to my pastor was, am I allowed? <laughs> Because I just hadn't seen much of that. My experience wasn't wow. that women did the teaching. Yeah. But man, I had a passion. I still have a passion for the word of God and uh, for making that known and, and plain and stirring that up in other people's lives. And so I said yes. And then I said yes again. And then I said yes. And then one day he said, will you be licensed as a pastor? And Golly, I said yes. So talk again. about that. I mean, what <laughs> talk about that day and how that came about and just, you know, yeah. uh, and it really says a lot about your pastor. Yeah, yeah, it does. And I think it was a journey for him, though I won't speak for him, um, and a journey for the elder team at our church, and I won't speak for them. So just for me personally, um, he we were uh we have a partner church in the Dominican Republic and my pastor Derek is his name we were both on that trip and on the flight back we were seated next to one another and he just asked uh hey would you consider praying about this and i was pretty flabbergasted and i said yes and then commenced a long time uh for both me and the team of elders of just prayer and a lot of study honestly twana because i hadn't seen it I really wanted to be sure that this was the spirit's leading and not my own pride or mm. not some attempt to be culturally relevant, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And so a lot of study on both sides, reading people who say women should absolutely never preach, teach, or, you know, lead in any way. And with people who, you know, all the way to the other side of yes, women can do all the things that a man can do. So a lot of time, a lot of prayer, a lot of reading and studying. I feel like I know way too much about everybody's arguments. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always pretty yeah. out there, but yeah. So then just well, really got to a place where I felt like if, if God has gifted me and if he mm -hmm. has called me, then mm -hmm. I, I cannot resist the Holy Spirit's work in my life. Yeah. I must say yes, wherever that goes. So yeah. 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 Well, I'm so glad that you did. I know that um, saying yes has come with um, its own set of um, challenges, if, mm -hmm. if 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 I can use that. Um, you know, with your journey to to being licensed as a pastor, um, would you describe it as 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 smooth sailing, as as this straight path, or or was it? bumpy with some winding roads, you know, how, what, what, it, what has it looked like? Yeah. Uh, I wish it would have been more smooth, but it wasn't, it was pretty, <laughs> it was pretty bumpy. 
uh, so our our lead pastor was 100% on board and he proposed it to the elders and the elders uh, weren't ready. And so it took mm-hmm. time. It was about three years of winding road between uh, the wow. moment he asked me and then the day that I was actually licensed. Yeah, it was a long haul, uh, a little rough, a lot of pushback. Um, you know, when there's controversial things that come up in a church, people are going to get upset. People are going to walk away. Uh, and this is one of those big controversies in the church. And for our church in particular, having never had a woman license as uh, a pastor before, though we're part of the yeah. Converge Conference where you are <laughs> a pastor, <laughs> um, it just is it hasn't been done yet where we are. And so it was winding and it was bumpy and it was hard um, for my confidence you know, wrestling with some insecurity through that period of time. I felt like, I felt like the enemy really came at me uh, and made me question who I was in Christ. It both on that like ministry front, but also with some, you know, tough personal things that came up in my life. It was, it was a rough and it, it, it reminded me that when we say yes to God and when we say yes to the Holy spirit, that does not mean he's just going to clear the way and yeah. make it, you know, yeah this this really cool awesome yeah. rainbow and sunshine experience it's 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 hard and that's okay. yeah because i mean if he did that then we wouldn't you know we would probably be tempted to not lean on him uh-huh, as much yes. as we need to lean on him yeah. you know but we find ourselves having to lean on him Amen. and look to him you know and I'm so glad he comes through all the time. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Where would we be? <laughs> Absolutely. And I know just for myself as a woman in ministry, um, you know, that there can be various challenges. Um, what have you found to be particularly hard about being a woman in ministry? And, um, you know, how, how does how does this um, impact your husband and your and your kids? Yeah. Yeah. Good questions. Uh, some of the standard hard things about ministry are just, uh, you know, it, it involves people and people don't operate on a nine to five schedule. Right. And so, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, for ministry, it's Sunday through Saturday that, you know, people may need or call or those kinds of things. And again, being an introvert, the people part um, can be especially challenging, drains me faster than maybe I want Mm -hmm. to, but also makes me lean on Jesus more, like we're just saying. And then particularly like as a woman and as the first woman, it's just a, uh, yeah, it's just a like winding path. Like I have a fantastic group of staff around me, the men on staff, the other pastors are all men. I mean, they're amazing and fantastic and encouraging and they're all for me and they stand with me Mm. and, uh, all of those things, but they are men. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Men, and men think like men. And especially in a man's world uh, where things mm-hmm. are, you know, always just been assumed or done a certain way, or it's mm-hmm. all of the new things to navigate. It's all of the new conversations to have with them. It's, it's for me learning to discern uh, when do I say something about that's probably maybe not the best way to handle that. If we're going to encourage women to step into leadership here, like when do I speak up? When do I just mm-hmm. ride it out? I, I'd say all of those kinds of things can be tricky to navigate. And I'm probably in the best possible environment for that because again, I've got the yeah. support and the encouragement of very godly men around me, but they will yeah. still say things a certain way that I'm like, Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. well, they're like, still men. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just you know, like all the pastors' wives, and I'm like, well, this pastor has a husband, so <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> what does that mean? You know, yeah, on my side. But and to answer your question about my husband and my kids, they're very for me. I would not be here if it weren't for my husband. He has been my biggest champion the whole way. Mm. I mean, he just wants he wants nothing more than to see me thrive in what God has called me to do, and so. Uh, he just loves it. Yeah. And he, he sings, he's one of the worship leaders at our church. He sings Uh-oh. and plays the piano. So there are Sundays when we are both working, oh. you know, on stage yeah. and he's behind yeah. me, which is just interesting. And I'm the one, you know, standing out front, uh, speaking. And so 
I just, I love him so much that he's, he's manly enough to be okay with his wife uh, standing there. And that's amazing. Yeah. And then my, our kids yeah. are little. And so they're just along for the ride right now. They, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they think it's great. They love church. So I hope that well, that, that's good. I hope that stays. Yeah, I think that's so important. I mean, when you, you know, the Lord has definitely put you in a great position to, like you said, to be surrounded by godly, a godly team, and then to have the support of your husband, you know, um, which is huge. I mean, yeah. of course, whether you're a man or a woman, you know, if your spouse is not on board, it just doesn't work. Right. I mean, it just, you can never just say, oh, this is their thing or whatever. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah. Um, it's always a team effort because it requires, you know, two people coming together and, you know, really believe in what God has purposed. Um, I know, really to be fully vested in ministry, it means, you know, um, you know, taking the good with the bad, taking the, the ups with the downs, the highs with the lows. Um, and you have to really love the church. Yeah. Yeah. Why does Sarah love the church? Uh That's a good question because to be honest, Tawana, there are times I wonder, (laughs) Um, I I feel you. (laughs) Uh, People are hard because we're all broken. And when I say people, I include myself in that. That's a we, Mm -hmm. we people, we people are difficult and challenging. Um, So I mentioned before how much I love the word of God. And over the years, having, you know, read it start to finish over and over and over again, and just being saturated and with the overwhelming truth of how God loves his people and how much Mm -hmm. Jesus loves his church and how that is his design and is his intent for how the world will know who he is and what he has come to rescue us Mm -hmm. from. And so for that reason, (laughs) that is like the anchor for my, um, my commitment that I will serve the church for the rest of my life. And that, you know, the role, the position, the title will most probably change. Uh, but I can think of no better way, um, to love the Lord with all my heart and to love his other people with all my heart than to, to serve his church. And so if it were for Jesus, I would not love the church because, <laughs> <laughs> because people are hard, I, but because of him and because how much he loves us and has done for us. And, and so for me in my role and my passion and my gifting, that means that I will serve the church by making the, you know, word of God accessible for, yeah everyone, you know, whether that's preaching, teaching, writing, researching, podcasting, whatever, whatever format takes, let's get the word out there. Right. Fill people. with Yeah. Yeah. That, that is so important. Um, so talk to us about how you, um, or or really where you find the courage and, Mm -hmm. um, and the confidence, um, for the work of ministry, because you've got to have a lot of courage, um, for ministry and you've got to have, um, you know, a God confidence, Mm -hmm. you know, um, for the work of ministry as well. Yeah. Well, it certainly does not come from within me. (laughs) I know that to be, (laughs) I know that to be certain. Uh, I had mentioned just, you know, reading the scriptures and seeing how much God loves his people. I, I have read through the Bible several times in the last couple of years. And I had this realization at the end, just a month or so ago at the end of last year, that uh, how much that has built my confidence because I'm Mm. reading over and over and over uh, who my God is and what he has done. And then over and over and over seeing what he has done for his people, the language he uses for his people, the things he has done for his people. And so that, again, the people includes me. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, am his child and I am justified and I am called and I am sanctified, you know, all of those things that I can stand on. And so Tawana, I really believe that the more time I spend in the word, the more he builds my confidence because I know who he Mm -hmm. is and therefore I know who I am. And uh, other, yeah, other than that, I don't know. I don't know how anyone does what they do. 
yeah. without knowing yeah. those two those two things, you know. Yeah. Is there a scripture? Um, it's sort of like a life scripture hmm. that that speaks to you, you know, yeah. as it relates to your life and ministry. That's a good question. Um, I'm not really like a life first kind of person, but I would say that at this moment in this season, um, Ephesians 2.10 immediately comes to mind that, Mm -hmm. you know, speaking, Paul speaking to the church that we are his workmanship and that that, the Greek Mm. word there is poema. So it's like this beautiful masterpiece, you know, artistically Mm. formed and that we were uh, created for good works that he prepared in advance for us to do. And so, yeah the confidence in that verse of he has created, he has put together mm-hmm. this masterpiece that he has planned for each of us uh, to do his good work. I, I can stand on that one for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good one. That's mm-hmm. a good one. What would you say to the young woman who is just coming into her ministry path and needs some guidance along the way? Yeah. Uh, first things that come to mind are, Read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible. (laughs) (laughs) Stay plugged into that. No matter what, make it, you know, commit to that time every single day. Get in that word every single day. Um, To me, that's the biggest thing. And then the second thing is some of us are dreamers and we have a vision for where we're going to be in five years, two years, Mm -hmm. ten years, right? And we dream big and we have, you know, we get really excited about what, potential is that God has for us and others of us don't have that dream yeah. um, and we're just like unsure and we get insecure about who we are and we're not sure the next step to take I'd say for both kinds of women look for the next best yes so if you're a mm. dreamer and you're five years down the road pull that back and look for what God wants you to say yes to today and if yeah. you if you get crazy thinking about what's happening in the next year and you just can't even begin to dream that far that's all right just today what's God's best yes for you today because if he's got a big lofty plan for you he's going to take you there one step at a time he's not just going to like skip all the little steps you know in between (laughs) Um, Yeah. yeah so I think that that would be that's what I would love to go back and say to my 20 year old self your younger self yeah (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, because so often we want to know all the steps, we want all the the details, the turns, you know, we want it, we want it all, yeah. and it just doesn't work that way. No, um, and I'm actually kind of glad it doesn't. Right? <laughs> if we had and known then, some of the things. <laughs> oh my goodness, we would be like, no, 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 yeah. no, no. Well, you know, this has been so good. Um, you know, we have women who are listening to us today. Um, some who are um, serving in, in leadership and ministry, some who desire to, um, and some who feel burned out yeah. um, by it. Um, I want to ask you before we close, if you can just pray for all of our listeners and, and encourage them in their ministry leadership journey. Yeah, I'd be so honored to. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus, I... I love that you are here with us, wherever we sit, wherever we are, whatever's going on around us, uh, could be chaos, it could be calm, but Jesus, you're here and you are present. And so Jesus, I pray that in um, the peace of your presence, in the majesty of your presence, in the awe and the wonder and the, the hope of your presence, that you would fill up to overflowing every woman who is listening, that they would know mm-hmm. who you are, and that they would know who they are in you, that they would know that you are their creator, you're the good shepherd, you're the light that's going to lead them, you're all every good thing that they could need, that you are enough for them, and that they would know that they are your child, that they are safe, that they are secure, and that nothing is ever going to separate them from your amazing presence. And so whether they're burned out or just getting started or coming off an incredible victory or facing a giant in front of them, wherever they are, I pray that you would give them confidence as they look forward, that they keep their eyes on you to take whatever next step that they need to take. Whether that's a hard no, whether that's a, oh, I'm not sure, but I'm going to say yes because it's hard. Whatever that next step is, Jesus, I just pray that the power of your presence would give them confidence 
uh, to take that step with you. And we are just mm. so thankful to give you all the glory and all the honor for everything that you are doing in a, the mm-hmm. women who are here and listening. I thank you for Tawana and her ministry and how she is reaching and encouraging so many. Just pray that you would bless mm. her big too. In your precious name, mm. we say these things. Amen. 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 Well, Sarah will be one of the breakout presenters at this year's uh, 2023 Unleash Conference, which actually starts on February the 1st. So if you are a woman in ministry and will be in Orlando, uh, please be sure to attend her breakout session. We would love to see you there. I know that it'll be a blessing to you and we would just... um, uh, love just to hear your story as well. But Sarah, thank you again for sharing your journey with us. Um, I know that it has encouraged um, so many, and I'm just so excited about uh, even the next that the Lord has in store for you. Oh. Well, thank you so much again. It was such an <laughs> honor to be asked and to be here, Twana. Thank you. And to all of our listeners, thank you for joining us today. I'm Twana Henderson. Be blessed of the Lord. <laughs>